what's up unstoppable squad today we have another aew full show results of dynamite i'm unstoppable denominator bringing you guys aew dynamite full show results and thoughts on dynamite show tonight's episode of aew dynamite fight for the fallen was broadcasted live from the bridgestone arena in nashville tennessee Excalibur, Tony Scavani, and the Human Suplex Machine. Taz were the broadcast team for tonight's event. It's Wednesday night, and you know what that means. AEW International Championship match is on the line. Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy as your champion versus the Blackpool Combat Club Wheeler Yuta. Orange and Wheeler traded arm drags. Then they exchanged stiff chops and forearms. Wheeler suplexed, but the then Orange countered with a one of his own. These guys are going move for move, said Taz. Wheeler blasted the champ with a Topia Suicida. Orange suplexed Yuta on the arena floor. Yuta spiked on Orange on the ramp. Wheeler followed up with a thrust kick to Orange's head. Back in the ring, we have Orange blasted Yuta in the beach break. Wheeler chomped down on Orange's hand and then stomped on it, trying to neutralize the hand that Cassidy uses for the Orange punch. <clears throat> Orange took flight with a, tup a Topia Suicida. Orange climbed the turnbuckles but Wheeler kicked him in the head. Wheeler rocked Orange with a massive superplex. <clears throat> Wheeler crash, crashed down onto Orange with a diving splash for a near fall. Cassidy clocked Yuta with a PK and then DDT Yuta. John Moxley and Claudio Castanoli Claudio Cesaro walked out of the stands and glared at Orange for from Orn, from ringside blah, 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 ringside sorry Orange looked over at Moxley and nailed Yuta with a paradigm shift he looked right at Moxley when he executed that paradigm shift said Tony Scavani Moxley's not impressed replied Taz which he like to, he was not happy because he, his own move got stolen. Orange connected with the orange punch on U, Wheeler Yuta. Orange immediately grabbed his hand. Oh man, Orange, Cassidy is hurting, said Tony Scavani. Yuta locked up Orange in the seatbelt for a near fall. Orange rocked Wheeler, held uh, onto his jean pockets, and pinned Wheeler. Immediately after the match, the BCC swarmed Orange Cassidy and began to pummel him. Then the best friends, Trent Beretta and uh, Chuck Taylor, sprinted to the ring to even up the odds. But the best friends still were not one at 100%. The Lucha Bros came down to the ring with Alex. The Lucha Bros dished out stereo thrust kicks to Claudio. Moxley took a powered powder, took a powder, leaving the ring before anyone could get their hands on him. Moxley got out of town, said Scavani. Claudio and Moxley grabbed steel chairs and were about to enter the ring again when Eddie Kingston's music hit. hit. Kingston ran to the ring and began to brawl with Claudio. This just broke down. This has just broke down. And it, as soon as Eddie Kingston's music hits, um, John Michaels is like, then, like that. Holy, he was like, holy shit. <laughs> um, it maybe had a, he had to remember his theme song, but the, can you read the Titan John? <laughs> um, uh, Eddie Kingston, hey guys, uh, hey, guess what? Wembley Stadium, boys, all in, boys. 
us against you and whoever you can find in a stadium stampede match. Ooh, I can't wait. A lot of people are saying that it's next Saturday. No, it's next Sunday, guys. Um, heel Josh on TikTok. You know, these those guys that are reacting, they just talk over the promos. It's annoying. I hate when they do that. It's just like, guys, I'm trying to listen to them, not you guys, talk while I'm trying to listen to them cut a promo. They're cutting a promo and your guys are talking over it. You know? Eddie Kingston, hey, guess what? Okay, never mind. Sorry about that. I read that before. Um, Jim Ross had a sit-down interview with the elite um, Kenny Omega at Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. Jim Ross wanted to know about Omega's plan for All In London. And he wanted to know how Omega could even consider b doing business with Don Callis. Omega says, Uncle Don was just a friend of my real uncle, Uncle Larry, the Golden Cheek. And whether it was Christmas or my birthday, he was always there. <clears throat> now that I look back, it was really an odd childhood. Um, I don't, I didn't have friends. Don doesn't like friends. I wasn't able to have after school parties. Don gave me my first weight set. My first tub of protein, he'd say, take your vitamins. And the way he guided me made me the best athlete possible. I try every day to remember that version of Uncle Don. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. And I found my self trying to justify what this guy has done i'm trying to find a reason not to make my entire existence one of revenge <clears throat> i just want to move on i don't want him to get into my head i don't want him i don't want this to all be about don and the people he chooses to be part of his family Tashida and I go way back. I saw a lot of myself in him when I was in DDT in Japan. I thought this is the, the kind of guy you want to guide the right way. As the god of pro professional wrestling, I have the power to giveth and I have the power to taketh away. Those don't make sense there. Um, Paige. Or Omega. And Don. This new cash cow of yours. That you think means the world to you. I'm going to take him away. Don Callis interrupted the interview. Callis says. Whoa JR. I didn't know you were a physical therapist now how is how is your mental health ken i am really concerned switchblade jay white and juice robinson ambushed omega Tashida joined in in on the beatdown as don yelled more and more 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 hangman and page had followed his Friend Omega to the hospital. Adam Page, if you're going to drive all the way to Jacksonville to do a beatdown, it's at least good. It's at least got to be good. It's got to be longer than two minutes. If you're going to start a beatdown, you have to finish it. I'm outside of the hospital with Kenny inside of it. I'm, it may seem like he is, but Kenny's not finished, and neither is his friend list. Because in London, Kenny will have two of his greatest friends, and not to flatter myself, two of the, of his greatest tag team partners of all time, and Hangman and Ibushi. Ibushi. 
a dream team if you will in front of one of the largest crowds in the history of professional wrestling choose Jay Tashida the little beatdown you started at Wembley we finish it Don Callis was in the ring Callis says it looks like everyone wants a piece of Don Callis's family ladies and gentlemen we now we know the world is waiting without further ado we're going to get the answer in my it's my pleasure to introduce the greatest of all time and my best friend for 34 years, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho came down to the ring. Jericho, what happened last week broke my heart. When all the members of the Jericho Appreciation Society walked out on me, it made me relevant myself. It made me relevant who I am as a person. I told you, Don... Chris Jericho doesn't join factions. Chris Jericho creates them. And after what happened last week, it obviously, it's obvious what the answer is. So my answer, if I want to be part of the Don Callis family, well, it's, took a minute and said, yes. The answer is yes. I tell, I'll tell, i tell you why, Don. When the Jericho Appreciation Society walked out on me, I realized I needed to get back onto my roots. I need to align with a man who is just as low as I am. The, yes, the answer is yes. Jericho and Callis hugged. Callis says, this is great. Let's go drink Broadway dry and beat some beat up some rednecks. Just like back in the day. Jericho says, before whoa, 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 before we go, what's the what's with the picture there? Jericho turned back and looked at the picture set up in the ring that had a black cloth draped over it. At first I thought it was pretty much, you know, him and Don Callis touching fingers like when Kevin Owens and um, Chris Jericho was doing that, you know. Um, Callis says, oh, I got another picture of you. Me and Bad News. Uh, which, no, which one of your houses do you want it sent to? Jericho says, no, no, seriously. If you've got a painted picture for me. I want to see it. Let's check it out. Callis says, Chris, Chris. Jericho says, if it's a gift for me, I want to see it. Jericho pulled the cloth off the painting and it was revealed to a portrait of Don Callis holding up Jericho's despite head. Deprecated head, sorry. No wonder Don Callis was so surprised by Jericho's answer, said Excalibur. Jericho says, what is this? Callis says, what do you think it is? It's a joke. It's a practical joke. Jericho says, did you think I was going to say no? So over a business decision, you were going to have me assassinated? You were going to have me beheaded if I said no to you? Callis says, no, you don't understand. This is very embarrassing for me. I paid a lot of money for you to have a painting of you and me and bad news. And the artist screwed it up. Jericho says, stop, stop, stop. I have known you since 1989. I know when you're telling the truth, and I know when you're telling the lies. You're lying to my face right now, Don. For the first time in your life, you scumbag low life. be honest with me and tell me the truth. Be a man and tell me the truth. Callis says, you want the truth? Okay, you're right. I did not think in a million years... You would say yes to me, Chris. I thought you would say no because of your massive ego. Mm, sounds like you, Don Callis. 
I've known you for 34 years and it's always been about you. So yes, I thought you'd be a stupid, dis make a stupid decision and say no. So Chris, in a bus business full of egomaniacs, you truly are the greatest at that. You are a narcissist, egomaniac, who is too stupid to see what's going for him. And you don't deserve to be part of the Don Callis family. Jericho says, the Don Callis family? Who the hell is Don Callis? Three years ago, you weren't even in the wrestling business. And nobody cared. And now, because of me, you're in AEW. At the top of your career. And p compared to me, still nobody cares. And this is why. Don, you have lots. You lost everything. You you lost your family. You lost Kenny Omega. You lost your friends because of what. Because you don't have me. You have messed up every single personal relationship you had in your life. And you want to know why? Because you're a low life. You're a worm. You're a piece of trash. Oof. That's gotta hurt. And Don Callis, you are an asshole. Well, I've screwed up a lot of relationships in my life, especially with my former friends. But, you know, does that count me as a low life? Since I still have friends and stuff and everything? Maybe, but... At the same time, no. Don Callis slapped Jericho. Jericho shoved Don Callis against the turnbuckles. Tashita jumped into the ring with a steel chair, but Jericho cut him off. Will L. Spray jumped into the ring and blindsided Jericho. Don Callis called in reinforcements, said Excalibur. Will Ospreay cracked Jericho in the skull with the steel chair and busted him wide open. As Tashida and Osprey held up Jericho, Don Cal smashed the picture frame over Jericho's head. Sammy Guevara ran to the ring with Jericho's bat, baseball bat, excuse me, and Callis, Tashida, and Osprey retreated out of the ring. Jake Perry. Jack Perry said next week on Dynamite, he is going to retire the FTW Championship. Darby Allen and Nick Wayne versus Gates of Agony. Bishop Khan and Toa Leon. The Gates of Agony rushed at Darby and Nick and Darby and as Darby and Nick were making their entrance. Swerve Strickland and A.R. Fox walked onto the ramp with steel chairs. Nick Wayne rocketed out of the ring with a Topia Suicida onto Bishop Khan. The Gates of Agony hip tossed Nick into the barricade. The Gates of Agony double teamed Darby Allen. Nick Wayne sent Toa flying off the apron with a Hercarana. He followed up with a cutter to Bishop. Darby splashed Bishop with a coffin drop on and pinned him. Excuse me, sorry. Darby and Nick were ready to for the fight with Fox and Swerve as Michael and Bassey members inched closer to the ring. Sting appeared on the big screen. Who's, whose house? asked Sting. Sting says, come on, I've got something I want to talk to you about. I'm directing movies. Yes, Stinger is making movies now. And I've got a great leading man. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. But first, Fox, this is for you. You better have eyes on the back of your head from the this moment forward. Why? Because you have a coffin match in nine days at Wembley Stadium. I love it. The red blood cells are already moving. Tell them, leading man. Sting pulled Prince Nana into frame. Prince Nana says, actually, 
you have 11 of days away, sir. Singh says, well, I guess the thing left, the only thing left is to say is, it's showtime! Our next AEW World Champion, MJF and Adam Cole. MGF says, cut our music. The devil has arrived. Adam Cole says, we are weeks, we are a week and a half away from the biggest professional wrestling of all time. I'm talking about All In. And during Zero Hour, Adam Cole and MJF are going to become your new Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. And we're going to do it. MJF says, with a kangaroo kick, baby. Adam Cole says, Max, I was going to say we're going to win with a double clothesline. But that is not just the only match taking place that night. Because in the main event, we have Adam Cole against MJF. For the AEW World Championship. And this is going to go down as the most important match in my entire life. Because nine months ago, I was told by multiple doctors that I may never wrestle again. Fast forward, and, not, and now I'm the biggest professional wrestling. I'm in the biggest professional wrestling of all time. Show and of all time. Sorry, god damn it. Challenging for the... I know, I need to calm down and slow down and relax. But I want to get this done because I have reactions to take care of on my main YouTube channel. And I'm an hour behind because I pretty much had to go grocery shopping and get stuff what I needed. Fast forward, now I'm in the biggest professional wrestling show of all time. Challenging for the most prestigious prize in our sport. The AEW World Championship. And I'm going to do it one with one of the my best friends. I'm talking about you, Max. This match is so important for my legacy. For 15 years, I've been at the top of every wrestling, professional wrestling I have ever worked for. I've broken records with my championship runs. In this match with Max, that solidifies my legacy in AEW. But not just being in this match, but winning the match. Because, Max, I love you, but I need to win this match more than you could ever imagine. And now, I'm telling, just telling you this out of love. But the second that bell rings, I will need... Okay, sorry. Um... Second that bell rings, I will do anything and everything to win that AEW World title. MJF says, that, that was a great story. Too bad mine is better. When I first got into this sport, um, on my first day at wrestling school, we were told to write down dream opponents. I wrote down two names, Cody Rhodes and Adam Cole, baby. Fast forward Three, the year in 2018, I for one have had a dream, a brand new Dodge Ram truck in that one year. I put 90,000 miles in it, on it, because I busted my ass trying to make a name for myself on the independent scene circuit. And then a little birdie tells me in 2008. Excuse me. 2018, there was going to be a show in Chicago. A show that would be in the biggest show in the wrestling outside of the WWE in decades. And that show was called All In. So I got my shot. I shot my shot. And I DM'd Cody Rhodes. And I said, sir, you don't know me all that well. And you don't owe me a damn thing. But if you... Give me an opportunity. I promise you will not disappoint. Some time went by. Some time went by. The show was getting closer and closer. And my phone. My phones. Of get. 
My hopes of getting on it were getting thinner and thinner until I got a response from Cody Rhodes. He said to me, kid, you're all in. That was the biggest night of my career. I got to open a pay-per-view. I had no right being on. And yes, I am. I may have lost that night. However, I managed to turn some pretty important heads. One of the, one of them being at a man be, by the name of Tony Khan. After the match, Tony Khan offered me a contract to a company called. All Elite Wrestling. The fact of the matter is, if there's no All In, there's no MJF. And that's a fact. Fast forward. The year is 2023. And I went from being an unknown, and I scratched and I crawled, or clawed my way up from the undercard. And I grew up in front of... Your very eyes. I became a generational talent. I became the devil himself. I became the world AEW championship champion. And now, once again, I'm looking at the opportunity to be on a show called All In. And it will be in front of all of the biggest car crowd in the history at, of this sport. And I am going to be in the main event with a guy who on day one was my big, biggest dream opponent. And who I can proudly say has become my best friend. This, this means so much to me. You have no idea. However, it doesn't mean everything to me. There is only one thing that means everything to me. And that is the Triple B. This is not simply just a title. This symbolizes all my blood, sweat, tears, countless hours training in the gym. Also, also, I could obtain this. And if you think just because I'm your bud, I'm going to lay down. I'm going to lay down on August 27th. You're out of your mind. I love you like a brother, but... A win in Wembley Stadium will might will make my leg legendary make me legendary, and I'm going to win, Adam, because nobody is on the level of the devil. Adam Cole says, "Well, Max, may the best man win." MJF says, "I have a feeling the best man is going to win because I'm MJF and I'm better than you, and you know it." Adam Cole says, that's interesting because I'm pretty sure your new AEW World Champion's name is Adam Cole, baby! Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, Aussie Open, emerged from the crowd and attacked MJF and Adam Cole. Adam Cole and MJF turned the tables and got the upper hand on Aussie Open. They tried for the double close on, on Mark Davis, but he jumped out of ring and pulled Kyle Felt. Fletcher with him. Roderick Strong was as watching on a monitor backstage with King's Kingdom, Mike Bennett, and Matt Tavin. Pretty much, I feel something's telling me um, that mm, Adam Cole is going to low blow him. Or freaking um, Roderick Strong is going to cost Adam Cole the match here. Who knows what's going to happen. Chris Jericho was backstage being stitched up. Jericho says, Osprey, at Wembley Stadium, your home turf. You want a piece of Chris Jericho? Jericho versus Osprey at All In. I'm going to make you bleed and drink your own blood. I'm going to get inside your head and embarrass you. You don't know what you got into. But you've been, you've opened hell, and the Ocho is coming for you. Next, we have a uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Death Match. The Last Outlaw, Jeff Jarrett versus Jeff Hardy. Absolutely, anything goes, and the only way to win is by pinfall. Jeff Jarrett ambushed Jeff 
Hardy. Hardy whipped Jarrett into the wall and plunged Jarrett with a crutch. Santom uh, Scene grabbed Jeff Hardy by the neck and hoisted him up against the wall. Matt Hardy, Brother Zay, and Ethan Page came out to even up the odds. This is one of the most bizarre matches we've seen in all elite wrestling, said Excalibur. Jeff Hardy dropped Jarrett on the ramp. Smoke began to billow out of the beneath of the ring. Hardy smacked Jarrett with a Kendall stick. Jeff Hardy connected with a swanton, crushing Jarrett through a table. Jay Lethal jumped into the ring to break up the pin attempt. Ethan Page blasted Lethal with a shoulder tackle. MJ, wow. Matt Hardy hit the twist of fate on Lethal. Karen Jarrett hit Matt Jarrett. Matt Hardy, god damn it, from behind with a cheap shot. Jeff Jarrett. Grabbed the, his guitar, but Jeff Hardy pulled it away and smashed it over Jeff Jarrett's head. Another face came out to the ring. As rumors are saying, oh, it's it's Jay Uso. No, it's not. Jay Uso doesn't have hair on his arms. The guy, the leather face had hair on his arms. Come on now. And he looked a little taller than to be, um. Jay Uso. And Leatherface came out to the ring and kicked Jay Lethal in the midsection. Lethal. Leatherface chased Karen Jarrett to the back. Cinema scene grabbed Jeff Hardy and then Jay Lethal cracked Jeff Hardy in the back with a hammer. Cinema scene choked slam Jeff Hardy. Lethal placed Jeff Jarrett onto the top of Jeff Hardy and then Jarrett scored the pin. Boo. All in. London's Women's Championship qualifying match. Qualifier match. Dr. Britt Baker DMD versus the Bunny with Penelope Ford. Bunny charged at Britt, but Britt rolled up Bunny for a near fall. The Bunny stomped on Britt's hand. She followed up with a knee lift to Baker. Penelope Ford jumped on the ring apron and distracted Britt long enough for the bunny to hit a lariat. But fired back, Britt, back, Britt Baker fired back with forearms. Britt battered bunny with elbow strikes. Britt hit the sling blade. <clears throat> Britt nailed bunny with a swinging neck breaker for a near fall. Baker landed a thrust kick and then the curb stomp and she pinned the money. She punched her ticket, said Taz. The acclaim, Max Caster and Anthony Bowens versus before the claims opponents were introduced by Justin Roberts, the arena lights were went dark. <clears throat> when the lights came back on, <clears throat> The AEW World Trios champions of the House of Blacks were standing tall behind the acclaim in the ring. Um, the House of Black ran over the acclaim like a freight train. Brody had a chain wrapped around his hand and he clocked Max Caster with it. Brody planted Bowens in the center of the ring. Julia Hart and Billy Gunn's wrestling boots had Billy, Billy Gunn's wrestling boots. They were handed over to Malachi Black. I have a feeling that this is leading up to um, All In or after All In. Next, we have the main event, uh, Young Bung. Oh, my God. The Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson versus the Guns, Austin and Cut, Colton Gunn. The Bucks super kicked the Guns as the Guns were making their entrance. The Bucks doubled suplex Colton in the ring. They hip tossed Austin. The Bucks cleaned house with a flurry of offense. The guns gained some traction working over Matt Jackson with Tenement offense. Matt Jackson rallied back and tagged Nick Nick took down the guns with a huge double crossbody. 
<clears throat> Nick super kicked Austin. Nick punted, punt kicked Colton. Matt Jackson tagged in and super kicked Austin. Nick smashed Austin with a th with a knee strike. Colton saved his brother from the box. Colton tagged in, but Matt rolled him up for a near fall. The guns hit Matt with a 310 to Yuma, but Nick used an elbow drop to break up the pin attempt. Matt German suplex Austin gone. <coughs> Matt pinned against Austin with some leverage from his brother. Juice Robinson and Jay White jumped into the ring after the match and began to ground and pound the Young Bucks. They placed Matt Jackson's injured arm between the steel chair and they were about to crush the arm when FTR's music hits. FTR jumped and the ring and they cleaned house on Bullet Club Gold. The Bucks and FTR cooperated to clear out the ring of the Bullet Club, but pretty much FTR was about to um, hit the shattered machine or whatever the, the fin uh, finisher move. Catch AEW Dynamite on TBS next Wednesday live at 8 7 Central from Guest South Arena in. Dolce GA. Uh, this Friday, tune in to Rampage at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on TNT. And don't miss AEW Collision on Saturday live on TNT at 8 7 Central from the Roop Arena in Lex Lexington, Kentucky, Kentucky, featuring. And remember. And remember, the home of professional wrestling is all elite wrestling. I'm unstoppable. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys under pink lights for Impact Wrestling. And I'll see you guys for SmackDown and AEW Rampage. And not just that, I will also see you guys for AEW Collision this weekend. I'm unstoppable. And I'm out. Hey, everybody. It's your boy Skiz here. And if you don't subscribe to, to Buon and the unstoppable denominator, then you are a toothy, bumfuck, pussy-ass bitch motherfucker.